we all know the B-29 Superfortress, as the bomber which delivered the nuclear bomb over Japan. But the B-29 Superfortress had a hidden but fatal design flaw. A flaw that will lead to the catastrophic failure of the B-29 almost every day of its 14-month service. Of the 414 B-29 that was lost in the bombing of Japan, 267 were related to this failed design flaw. And this was without any enemy attack. Nobody understood why the Superfortress fell out the sky so easily, as it was advertised to be the best and most advanced bomber in the world at that time. On 29th of July in 1944, a B-29 Superfortress of tail number 42656 of the 462 Bomb Squad, piloted by Captain Howard was on his return journey home after a successful bombing run over Japan. During the flight, something strange started to happen. The Superfortress started to awkwardly pan to the right side and was rapidly losing airspeed and altitude. It was something that the crew had never experienced before. The Super Fortress was also experiencing electrical issues, and they were no longer able to use the radio. But the captain of the bomber was no ordinary pilot. Captain Howard puts the B-29 into a slight 10-degree dive to maintain airspeed, runs checks, to understand what could be causing it. After the complete test of the airplane, the crew and the captain found nothing out of place nor any damages to the plane. In an effort to regain speed Captain Howard put the thrust to 100%. But even after putting the plane to the 100% thrust, Captain Howard released that the plane was still tilting, and it felt like a force was pushing the plane sideward. This is when Captain Howard realized that the plane will not make its journey back home. He was now faced with a choice of either surrendering to the Royal Japanese Army or ditch and destroy the plane. Surrender to the Japanese was never an option. So therefore, Captain Howard ordered his flight crew to destroy the flight manuals and their codebooks, so that enemy can't get to them. While they were doing it, Captain Howard suddenly realized that they could land at nearby Soviet airbase at Primrosy Cry. The Soviets were no ally of the Americans. But even then it was far better to land at a Soviet base than landing at a Japanese base. While the ramp tramp was having these malfunctioning, it cannot fight back at the Japanese and it was losing altitude rapidly. Something was needed to be done quickly. And so, Captain Howard took the plane to the Soviet airspace. This was as risky as entering into the Japanese airspace. The USSR gave an instant response to it. Eight fighters of Soviet Air Force intercepted the ramp tramp. Captain Howard had to let them know that they were not hostile through gestures because they had no radio contact and he had to do it ASAP. Russian pilots could not understand their gestures and the moment was tough as the B-29 was on verge of being shot down. Then Captain Howard put the plane into nose dive towards their airbase and let them knew that he wanted to land the plane and had no intent of attack. The fighters of the Russian Air Force escorted the plane to the nearby airbase in Vladivostok. The crew of Ramp Tramp was put into the prison, and any call for negotiation by the USA was ignored. The Soviets had long wanted to get their hands on the latest B-29 Superfortress, so that they could update their aging long-range bomber fleet. Following this incident, further three B-29 Superfortress and their crews would crash land over Soviet territory. Four crews over 40 men would suffer a similar fate. As the Soviet dismantled and studied the bombers, the U.S. continued to pressure Joseph Stalin over the upcoming months. But, it was evident that the Russians had no intentions of giving anything back. Since it would take over five years for Russia to develop their own long-range bomber. Joseph Stalin would decide to reverse engineer the American B-29, from bolt to bolt. So the 2-4, Russian super bomber was created. After all, this was the best most advanced bomber the world had ever seen. B-29 whilst it was bigger, faster, more heavily armed and carried a greater payload than its predecessor, the B-17 Flying Fortress. 
It had a design flaw that restricted its success in combat. The Soviets made a surprising discovery while thoroughly testing the captured B-29. The engine cowl flaps are small doors, which open and close help of the cooling of the engine. They were designed very poorly. They created so much excess drag at the B-29 that it couldn't even take off within fully deployed. While in the air, if the cowl flops on the B-29 were fully deployed, it would slow its speed to minimum, almost into a complete storm. The bomber crews were used to cruising with the cowl flaps closed, or very slightly opened, like on most planes, but this was not an option on the B-29. The right side of roughly 50 engines constantly overheated. And the cowl flaps had to be fully opened to cool them down, at the loss of a significant airspeed lift, as well as altitude. The Russians' test on the B-29 found out. Open cowl flaps on a functional engine are almost the same performance downside of an engine failure with the flaps fully closed. On top of this, every B-29 suffer from electrical failure, pad malfunction, and cowl flaps on the portside engines. They were stuck in the fully open position, despite the airflow over the portside, when turbulent, decreasing lift significantly, making you almost impossible to stay airborne for much longer. 267 of the 441 B-29 lost over Japan, were mainly due to the poor design of the cowl flaps. This led to constant overheating on the right side of engines. One B-29 was lost every day, during its very short 14-month career in correlation to this issue. Despite this, B-29 will always be remembered as the only plane in history, to drop a nuclear bomb over an enemy territory. Thank you so much for watching this video. To watch the story of the man behind MiGs. Click here.